Hello, welcome back to our Top 100 Countdown. We're Dorks Gone Wild, and I'm Kyle. I'm Tina. And let's start with the list at number 60. So my number 60 is La Isla, which is another Stefan Feld game. It's actually a game that, when we did our original rankings, I had it much higher, actually. And I've actually lowered it the more we played it. Fortunately, this game is so much luck involved in it that it takes away from the replay in this one. Um, it's got some cool mechanics. It's very light. It is by far his lightest game. Uh, but I just wish the luck factor wasn't so much. If you don't draw your animals, you're not going to win the game. We've played this seven times now, and we have not had a close game yet. Somebody's run away every time. So, so unfortunately, that drops it down. But for right now, it's number 60. My number 60, uh, we don't have right now, but it's Tarantula Tango. And it's um, in that same series as Cockroach Poker and Cheating Moths and all that. It's a very small, light, filler game. It We've had five plays. It was made in 2009. Plays two to five players in about 15 minutes. And it's a party game. And it's hilarious. And Kyle already knows I'm going to say this. You have to make animal noises when the card comes up. And... Kyle thinks that donkeys say Eeyore. They do. <laughs> they true. don't. That's the name of one of them. But anyway, that makes it even funnier and more enjoyable for me because Kyle's a big old dork with it. So that's my number 60, Tarantula Tango. My number 59 I don't have. It's uh, Chinatown. It's a uh, negotiation game. It's a very light game, really. It's a uh, it's a game where you have to trade spaces. You're on a, uh, you're building up laundry mats and sushi rest, not sushi restaurants. Is it dim sum restaurants? Oh yeah. And uh, you're, you have to trade to get anything you need in the game. You won't be able to draw what you need. You won't be able to score points based on that. So it is pure negotiation. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's set collection, um, but it's something I really enjoy. We played it four times. Uh, more people is better, and the better. Uh, a group that's talkative and social and knows each other makes this game much better with strangers I play it with strangers and it's not as much fun um, so Chinatown's a really really good fun game my number 59 has already been on Kyle's list it is 10 days in the USA only the USA because we get lost anywhere else anyway it was made in 2003 it plays two to four players we've played it 12 times it's a good little filler plays in about 30 minutes so we can pull that out pretty much any time and play it's got Plus playing zero minutes which is pretty cool. yes that's true you could pull right out your your cards right out and win without doing anything but arranging them which we haven't seen that yet though, haven't seen it but, but it's possible it's yeah um it's got hand management route building and tile placement and it's it's just a fun light filler that's my number 59 all right, my number 58 is Mission Red Planet. This is a, uh, uh, they're gonna reprint this one. So this is an older game, I think this one's out of print. It's one of the few ones we have. It's three to five players. It says about 60 minutes. Um, this is a game when, it, when they reprint it, I would highly recommend it. The, uh, this version has some horribly written cards, some misprints even. Um, the iconology on this is horrible, but I still love the game. So that tells you that it's, it's a pretty good game. Um, it's an area control game in its heart. Um, it's light. It's kind of silly at times. Uh, I, you, you hide cards on the board, which is really cool to me. Uh, this one's a lot of fun. Three to five players. Five players, the more the better. It's got where you play, everybody plays the card at the same time. I like that, and uh, it's very cool. My number 58 is Battle Line. I didn't think I was going to like this one at first. It's, <clears throat> it's poker with a twist, so it's kind of fun, actually. Um, it was made in 2000 for two players. We've played it 12 times between the two of us. I think you've played more I played than I. More, yeah. yeah, but it's it's actually a lot of fun. It's got some hand management, set collection, and deduction, um, but it is. It's poker with a twist. You're trying to win five out of the nine flags, and the highest army or formation of cards wins the flag, and it's... It's a lot to take in all at once, and you forget, and you've only got these many cards to play with, but it's it's actually very enjoyable, and that's my number 58, Battle Line. My number 57 is Augustus, or Rise of Augustus. It's called Bo. I think it's Rise of Augustus on the box, but if you look at it on BGG, it's uh, just Augustus. This is bingo. That's all it is. It's gamer's bingo. Um, it's very fun bingo. 
first time I heard this described, I thought it sounded horrible. So did I. It's like, why would I want to play bingo? But uh, so th this is where you're you're pulling out these uh, t tokens out of a bag, and then you mark them on your card just like in bingo. But this time, when you when you complete a card, you do yell Ave Caesar, and and our Ave Bingo, as we like to call it. <laughs> And then you get to do some <coughs> actions based on that. So this one's a lot of fun. It plays up to six, which is really nice. We played at 12. Definitely a random, random game, but it's short, uh, to the point. Um, I've had a lot of luck with this one, bringing it up to new gamers. They, they really enjoyed this one. Uh, Rise of Augustus or Augustus. My number 57 is has also been on Kyle's list. It is Raw the Dice Game. We don't have Raw, so this is our in-between. <coughs> It was made in 2009. It plays two to four players. It's got We've got 16 plays on it, but it's one of those that you play it and you're like, no, we're playing it again and I'm going to win this time. <laughs> that was not okay. Plays in about 45 minutes, but it could be quicker depending on how many raws are rolled and how fast it goes. Um, but it's got dice rolling, pressure luck, set collection, and I like the theme. I like Egyptian stuff, so that makes it more interesting for me. And you're building up your civilization and... You have to deal with catastrophes, oh. and then um, it, yeah, it's basically just a simpler version of Raw without it's a, the it bidding. It's very different from Raw, though. Uh, um, it's one of those games you can definitely have both. If you like Raw, yeah. you can have Raw the Dice game. They they have some similarities. Some things will make sense to you if you played Raw a lot, but they're totally separate. Yeah, but anyway, that's my fifty-seven. All right, my number fifty-six is Glenmore. This is a Tile placement game. It's got one of the very cool mechanics of going around the board and, and taking actions, taking turns. So you may go first one turn and may not go for four or five turns later if you get really aggressive and take something around the track that's farther. Um, we've played it four times. Have uh, we played it right yet? Yeah, so that's our <laughs> biggest problem with this game. Is, man, we're bad at these rules. Um, they're not written poorly either. It's just there's a lot to remember in this game. Um, how different tiles get played, what they activate, how they activate. Every time I pull this game out, I have to relearn it from scratch, it feels like. But I really I really enjoy it. Um, we've only played it two players. I think I, maybe I did play it no, once. We played it three. We did play it three. Mm -hmm. So, uh, good game. Uh, Glenmore, check this one out. Uh, my number 56 is actually split between two, but it's basically it's brass and, and brass light, basically, I guess. Brass and Age of Industry. Um, it was made two th Brass was made in 2007, and I've played it once, and I've also only played Age of Industry once, and I think I like Brass just a little bit better. Um, but it plays three to four players. It plays in about 120 minutes. It's econo economic hand management and route building, and it's got tech trees, which I really like, evidently. Um, and then here's the like and the dislike. It's mathy, and for some reason I like that in this game. It makes it more complicated, so I want to, like, be better at it. <laughs> and um, I hate math, and I'm not good at it, so that's my dislike with it as well. And I love that the first time I ever played it, I won it against a seasoned player, and I had to brag about it. Haha, -ha, Tim! <laughs> and, and I like brass, but it, it didn't make my list, only because we only have it played it once. That's how uh, much I liked it. And it's one of those games where I could never teach it. And if we, somebody played it today, I would not. They'd have to reteach the game entirely. But it's a really good game. It's really dry. Very it's dry. It's so dry. And I didn't think I would like it because it was so dry. But it was really, really enjoyable. And that's my number 56. So my number 55 is the opposite of dry. <laughs> it's King of Tokyo. So before we had Bingo, now we have Yahtzee. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, King of Tokyo is by Richard Garfield. Um, two to six players. Plays about 30 minutes. And with the expansions, it goes longer. So I do like the expansions, the Power Up expansions, but they do add a lot of time to the game. Where the base game is about 30 minutes. We've not played King of New York yet, uh, but it does seem like it's different enough where eventually we will play it, but no need to rush out and get it. Uh, this is a lot of fun just to bring out, smack people around, light, silly game. Especially if you have um, some players that don't like confrontation, but you end up liking this one a little bit more because it's silly. You know, yeah. uh, conflict. Um, but we've played this one um, 21 times, and uh, it's one of those games you played a couple times in a row as well. King of Tokyo. My number 55 is brand new to us. 
but it's P.I. It is Clue all grown up, and I love Clue. So this makes perfect sense. And back-to-back -back Martin Wallace games. Back-to-back -back Martin Wallace games, yep. Uh, P.I. was made in 2012, plays two to five players. Uh, I think I've played it twice, and I think you've played it four times, four something times. like that. Um, it plays about 45 minutes. It's got card drafting, a modular board, tile placement, and deduction. It's literally Clue that is for grown-ups. I mean, it, I mean, not dirty, but just mm -hmm. it's all grown-up. And I like that there's a little more interaction in this one than there is with Clue with the other players because you have to tell each other, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you have to, yeah, you have to help each other out with the, the deduction part. So that makes it a little more enjoyable even than Clue. And that's my number 55. My number 54, and I probably won't hold this one up very long. Nice. <laughs> Please don't. Couriers. <laughs> this is one of the expansion boxes. Couriers is a um, dice building <coughs> game. So if you play deck builders, you know how those work. This is with dice. You put them in a bag. You draw the dice out. The better dice you get, the more powerful you get. You still have your basic dice, which is kind of like your copper and your silver, but they call it quiddity. Everything starts with a Q in this game. <laughs> uh, when we first got this one, this was probably our favorite game for a while. We um, loved it. I, and it really is a fun game. It's a lot of luck. I mean, it's, it's Ameritrash. It's Ameritrash. It's a it is rolling dice and, and hoping they turn out the way you want it. It's frustrating when you buy the most expensive dice in the world and you roll it and it's on its worst side and you don't get much <laughs> out of it. It's so frustrating. It also comes, the base game comes with the worst box ever. The, I don't think we even have it out here anymore. The tin. It's uh, a tin dice. Tin dice. But the uh, expansion uh, holds all the dice correctly in yes. a big way. It is kind of a pain to tear up and take down. It's definitely a game when you play it, you put it up and you leave it out there. We played it 31 times, so we do. We do like this one a lot. Um, it doesn't play great with two. Um, yeah, we kind of found out it was, you know, not a lot of interaction and it kind of got really boring pretty fast. But yeah. uh, Couriers is still fun. Every once in a while to break out and play. Yep. My 54 is. <laughs> Gip. Part of the Gip series. This one is. Um, it's first it's in the series. Yeah, but it's Connect Four grown up basically. It's got the grid movement on the board, and you're you have to make four, you have to get four of your pieces in a row, and you're capturing your opponent's pieces, which gives it a more, gives it a better twist in my opinion than just Connect Four. Obviously, um, it's got some pattern building and some strategy, a little deduction from what the other person's gonna do, kind of thing. Um, we've played this one three times. It's a two-player game. Plays in 30 minutes. It was made in 1997, and yeah, that's my number. And 54. like the other gift games, great, great, great components, components, great pieces. Uh, uh, the boxes are definitely look, make the game look like it's not. It's not a you know, it's not a very thematic game at all. It's a, it's oh yeah, a, there's it's no a theme. board and some pieces. But it's it's a lot of fun. Made in 1997, and it stands up. I mean, it's it's a great game. My number 53 is another abstract, ingenious, I think this is the old box, um, two to four players, actually it says one to four, I don't know why you play this one one player, but... We but don't play anything one player. No. <laughs> um, what, what I like about this one is the board is very nice and controlled where you're, when you're putting things out they make sense where they need to go. I'm somebody that's partly colorblind, um, but this one's pretty easy because of the symbols. So they did a good job with, with making it easy for me, even for me to understand, and the colors stand out enough. Um, but I, I really like this one. We This one plays well between two and four. Um, we, we play it with all ranges. Um, we've played it seven times. Um, it's one of those games that ends way before you think it's going to end. I also like that when you're playing it, your lowest score is your score. So I, I'm an extremist when I play in games where I like pushing one strategy like crazy, and you can't do it in this game. This game forces you to be well balanced, which is really cool. Uh, but I really like this one, ingenious. My number fifty-three. We just got at Christmas time, and it is Thrar. <laughs> We've only played it once, but it was very much a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. Um, I was nervous about it because there's a lot of math involved. There's a lot of math involved, and I was very intimidated, but. Uh, it was made 2014, three to six players. We played it once, and it plays in about an hour. It's got auction and bidding mechanic, which we really like, card drafting, hand management, and set collection. 
Um, basically, you're building a monster, and he goes and rampages through the town that you're going to bid on, which is just <laughs> epic. I mean, why wouldn't you want to play that? I, the only thing I really don't like is that it's really mathy, but once you get the hang of it, it's not it's not difficult. You just have to... It's a little more complex than you would think. When you look at the box it and is. you look at the rules, it's got some more depth in there that you were surprised that it has. There's definitely some way. strategy to it, yeah. And the art's really quirky. But that's my number 53. Rawr. My number 52 is Resident Evil Deck Builder. Um, I, I really like this one. So I like I do like deck builders. Um, this is probably my second favorite deck builder. Maybe third now. So things change. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, plays one to four players. Uh, my son actually played this one player and he liked it. He had fun. Um, it says 30 minutes to an hour. Eh, it's going to go longer than that, I think. Um, we do play the epic rules like we do with Thunderstone where we just make big stacks of different guns and actions. And The cool thing I like about this one is at the, in Thunderstone, you know what the monster is and you know the math and you can do the math before you go attack it. In Resident Evil, you don't know what you're behind the door. So you're, you're kicking down the door and fighting whatever's behind it. So you may be way over prepared or way under prepared so I like that hidden drama to it where you don't quite know what's there you also get your own role so everybody plays a little bit differently that's very cool it does have a little bit of player elimination but you've got to die a lot you, gotta, <laughs> you really got to try you gotta try <laughs> to, to get killed in this game so I really like this one Resident Evil not enough love for this game my number 52 we don't have it is Port Royal and thanks Burns for letting us play it was made in 2014, two to five players. We played it once, and it plays anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes, depending on the turn of the cards. It's got some card drafting, press your luck, set collection. I like the press your luck because you're like turning over boats, and if you turn over, what is it, three boats of the same or two of the, same. Two of the same? Or two, is it two of the same? I'm not sure. Anyway, see, we've only played it once. Then you're out. You pressed your luck. You, you failed. But you can keep going, and you can use these boats for further stuff. It's it's really a cool mechanic. I like it. And the only thing I really dislike about it is it's got a little king maker to it. Yeah, at some point during the game you can figure out who's going to win and everybody can agree, well, if I only take a card, you only take a card, he can't get a card, so let's do that. And so it does get that way a little bit, but it's a really fun game. Yeah, and I won, so yeah, that was pretty good. Yay, king. <laughs> Number 51 <gasps> is the worst box ever made. Worst box ever made. Glory to Rome. We still have the old box. We haven't got the new box love this game um it's also kind of like where i don't remember how to play this like glenmore every, every time, time we bust this out the first five minutes of this game is me going have i ever played this game before <laughs> i don't remember any of this uh the art on this is really nice it's it's not as silly as it looks on the front uh it's a very you know you're building rome and uh trying to, to get different points that way it's got a couple unbalanced cards in there so i kind of wish they'd do a reprint I know they did a, a box, but I don't think they reprinted anything. There's a couple cards in here that I wish they were adjusted, but but we, I really like this one. It's it's a game that has no downtime either. Um, whenever somebody does something, you'll have an option to do it. So I like that. It keeps you in the game. Uh, glory to Rome. Yeah, you hate downtime, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> My number 51 we don't have, and I'm sad because I really, really want it. It's Goa. It was made in 2004 plays two to four players. We've only played it twice. I feel like we've played it more than that, but we've only played it twice. Plays in about 90 minutes, and it's got auction and bidding, grid movement, hand management, and some pressure luck. And it's kind of got like a tech tree feel to it where you're building a plantation and you have to upgrade things to make your plantation run better. And it's got a few different ways to win, so that's always fun. Um, yeah, I really want this game. So. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun game. It's got some cool tech tree on it that you're building up throughout the game. Um, it's another one of those games that ends before you're ready to it end. Definitely. But I like the bidding, how you, you know, you, you as the first player, you bid on something to become the first player again, and then you get to bid again on what you actually want to, what yes. you want to actually obtain. So it's got some cool little twists to the mechanic, but that's my number 51. All right, so we're halfway through the list. Uh, next 50 will be our top 50, and we're excited about that, and thank you guys for watching. Thanks.